Carlos and the Squash Plant. Carlos lived in the fertile Española Valley, nestled in the mountains of northern New Mexico. His mother and father were farmers and tended a large garden plot next to their thick-walled adobe home. They grew large green watermelons, sweet corn, juicy red tomatoes, and small green chilies so hot they burned the roof of Carlos's mouth. But his favorite vegetable was squash because his mother used it for making calabacitas, a spicy dish that combines the flavors of corn, squash, cheese, and green chilies. Carlos spent most of his days helping in the garden right alongside his brother and father. Together, they planted the seeds, weeded between the long, even rows, and gathered the vegetables when they were ripe. Carlos worked so hard that the rich brown earth ended up everywhere, under his fingernails, between his toes, and inside his ears. But he hated taking baths, and he especially hated washing his ears. His mother would warn him, if you don't wash your ears, a squash plant will grow in them. But of course, Carlos didn't believe her. One day, he had been in the garden all day and was especially dirty. When he came in the house, his mother told him he had to have a bath before dinner. Oh, Mama, do I have to? asked Carlos. But his mother just pointed toward the bathroom door. Carlos went into the bathroom and shut the door. But instead of taking a bath, he just wiped off his face with a washcloth. Then he put on his pajamas, went to the kitchen, and sat down at the dinner table with his brother, mother, and father. Did you take your bath? his mother asked, looking at Carlos with a raised eyebrow. See, si, Mama, I did, he said. Papa only shook his head. After dinner, Carlos went to bed. When the bright summer sun shone in his bedroom window in the morning, he woke up quickly. He had an itchy sort of feeling in his ear, and when he started to scratch it, he felt something strange. Carlos ran to the mirror. A tiny light green stem with two pear-shaped leaves was growing in his right ear. Just as he was wondering what to do, his mother called him for breakfast. He could smell the aroma of chorizo, spicy hot sausage, and eggs frying. Just a minute, Mama, said Carlos, and he ran to his closet where he found a wide-brimmed hat. He pulled it down over both ears and walked into the kitchen. Good morning, son, said his mother. Sit down and have your breakfast. But why are you wearing that hat? It's such a sunny day today, and I don't want the sun to get in my eyes, answered Carlos. And he ate his breakfast so fast he was outside before his mother could get a second look. Carlos worked outside all morning and ate his lunch sitting on a branch of a huge cottonwood tree while a thin stream of water ran beneath him. At nightfall, he came inside, and when his mother saw him, she told him to take a bath before dinner. Oh, Mama, do I have to? he asked, but Mama just pointed toward the bathroom door. Carlos went into the bathroom, but again, instead of taking a bath, he only wiped his face off with a wet washcloth. Then he sat down at the table. Carlos, did you take your bath? asked his mother as she served dinner. Si, sí, mamá, I did, said Carlos, and he quickly ate his dinner and then went upstairs to bed. He was so tired that he fell asleep immediately. The next morning, when the sun felt warm on his face, his right ear was itching more than ever. He jumped out of bed and looked in the mirror. The green plant that had been merely a tiny shoot the day before had grown to about four inches in length. Three more leaves had joined the first two. Ay, caramba, thought Carlos. But just then he heard his mother calling him and he smelled the aroma of fresh warm cornmeal cakes cooking on the stove. Carlos ran across the hall to his brother's room and found a big hat on the highest closet shelf. He pulled it down over both ears and walked into the kitchen. Good morning, son, sit down for breakfast, his mother said. But why are you wearing that big hat? Oh, the sun is so hot. I don't want it to get in my eyes, Carlos said, 
and he ate only a few bites of his breakfast and hurried outside. That evening, Carlos came in from the garden dirtier than ever, and once again, his mother told him to take a bath before dinner. But Carlos only wiped off his face and returned to the kitchen, the big hat still on his head. Carlos, did you take your bath? asked his mother. See, si, mamma, answered Carlos, pulling the large hat farther down over his ears. After dinner, he went straight to bed. Carlos woke up late the next morning, and his head felt heavy on one side. He didn't need to look in the mirror to know what had happened. A long green vine with yellow blossoms hung down the side of his pillow and trailed onto the floor. Carlos tried pulling it out. He tried breaking it off. He tried stomping on it with his foot, but nothing would rid him of the squash plant, which was now several feet long. Ay, caramba, he thought to himself, and just then he heard his mother calling him for breakfast. He ran into his parents' bedroom, where he found an even larger hat in his father's closet. Coiling the squash vine on top of his head, he pulled the hat down over both ears, then walked into the kitchen. Good morning, son. Have some warm tortillas and honey, said his mother. But why are you wearing Papa's hat? It's very sunny and bright outside. I want to keep the sun out of my eyes, Carlo said. But the sun isn't shining today. It is windy and cloudy, said his mother. Carlos didn't answer, but rolled up a tortilla and took it outside with him to eat. Sure enough, the weather was breezy and cool. Tumbleweeds blew down the road, and Carlos had to hold on to his hat with one hand while he weeded the garden with the other. Just as it was getting dark, Carlos let go of the hat for just a moment, and a gust of wind carried it down the road. At the same time, Carlos heard his mother calling him inside. Carlos covered his head with his arms, and before Mama could even ask him to take a bath, he had filled up the tub with water. Desperately, he began scrubbing his left ear. At the same time, he felt a tingly, itchy sensation in the other ear, and amazingly, the squash plant began to shrink. The more he scrubbed, the smaller it became, until finally the vine had completely disappeared. Carlos dried himself off, put on his pajamas, and walked out to the kitchen where he sat down for dinner. Mama, I have finished my bath, and I even remember to wash my ears, said Carlos. You are a good boy, and for you I have cooked your favorite dish, calabacitas, his mother said. And as she put the steaming plate down in front of him, she winked at Papa, who pretended not to notice. And that's the end of Carlos and the Squash Plant. Thanks for listening.